Hey there YouTube, we got the fans of my life coming at you one more time with another review. Today's review is going to be a little bit goofy. Instead of doing a series of one part reviews, which I will get to later on, what we're going to talk about today is actually a combination of different things. What we've got in front of us here, as you can tell by the title, is a series of the uh, Sig Sauer P22 somethings. And I'll get to that here in a moment. What we're going to talk about here today is a bunch of the differences between these guns. I haven't yet done an individual review for any of these yet because those already exist out there by the dozens and dozens out there. If anybody watching this video would like me to get a more in-depth review on one of these guns, drop me a line and I'll see what I can come up with. I'll uh, take a look and see what the consensus seems to be among the viewers. I don't mind doing another review on these, but there already seem to be quite a few out there. So what we're going to talk about today is really the difference between the SIG P228, the M11A1, the P226, and the P226 Legion. Um, most of those should be fairly familiar to you already if you're a SIG fan. If you're not, well, welcome to the video. We appreciate your stopping by, and we'll see if we can shed some light on what these are. But for those of you who are already among the, uh, the knowledgeable, if you will, for the differences here, I appreciate your tuning in and uh, hopefully it's not too boring for you. But what we're going to do is we're going to talk about what really separates these different types of guns. Hopefully try to, to dispel a few rumors that are out there, set the record straight a little bit, and uh, open some eyes for a few people who aren't quite sure what's what or what's available for them out there. So without further ado, I'm going to go over just the basic spe specs first, like I normally do with my reviews. And then I'll go over some of the pros and cons, and then we'll talk a little bit about some of the specifics that really separate these guns. Uh, so what we've got here today, in no particular order, I have the SIG P228, the M11A1, which we're going to separate those two here in a moment. This started life as a SIG P226 Nitrime, and this is the SIG P226 Legion. Again, we're going to go into a lot of what we're talking about here. So as far as the P226, that's this one right here. What we're talking about on that one, this, uh, this started life... As, the, as a SIG P226 Nitron. And what I mean by that is it's gone through a series of changes since it first came into being. But what it is, is a full size 9mm, 7.7 inches long, 5.5 inches tall, 1.5 inches in width. The weight empty but with the magazine is 34 ounces. And the magazine capacity gets kind of goofy. It's listed as a 15 round capacity, but if you've paid any attention to Sig Sauer magazines, you know that there's a bunch of different options out there. You can go 17, 18, 20, uh, and, and they all work just fine. The action is a single action, double action. The sights on it are the Sig Light Night Sights. The trigger pull, so factory trigger pull, and this is kind of weird, it's listed as 10 pounds and 4.4 pounds. What I found is my gauge only goes up to 11 pounds and that wouldn't pull the trigger so that's just over 11 pounds in double action and single action came in at around just under 5 so about 4.8 pounds so in both cases just slightly heavier than what the factory says the barrel length on these is 4.4 inches so it is a, a full size gun the slide finish is the nitron finish it does have the SIG accessory rail on it. The sight radius is 6.3 inches. Now those specs, for the most part, are going to mirror what we have here with the Legion, which I'll get to in a few moments. Now I've upgraded this 226 in a number of different capacities, and um, the uh, inspiration for some of these changes, I want to give credit to Steve Jenkins over at uh, or Ferrari Steve who has his own YouTube channel and he seems to has quite a few videos and extensive knowledge on the Sig Sauer uh, firearms. So I watched a number of his videos before I moved forward because I knew I wanted to make some changes. I just wanted to get some input and some direction on what changes, one, were feasible and two, were um, affordable, if you will. He has a series of videos out there where he transforms an old West German 226 to as close of a replica to the Legion as is possible. And he goes through and does an 10, actually now an 11 part video series talking about just what all was involved with it, 
at the end he kind of uh, summarizes the costs and the benefits and, and it lets you decide if it's worth it or not. But I'm not going to get into all of that right now, but check his video out if you are interested in that. Again, that's uh, Steve Jenkins. All right, so the changes I've made to this P226, I did put um, the SRT trigger kit in it. So the SRT, there's two different things here that get mixed up. SRT stands for short reset trigger. And then there's also what's called a short reach trigger. The short reach trigger I have put in this gun. And what that does, and really all that it is, it's going to be tough to see in the video, but the trigger itself is thinner, so your finger gets to it easier, it's an easier reach. That's the short reach, reach trigger. The SRT, or short reset trigger, is actually a kit. It is not the actual trigger itself. It's a couple of parts inside. What it does, and if you're not familiar with this, then this also is, goes a long way towards uh, tipping my compliments uh, to the Legion series. The short reset trigger is phenomenal on these guns. Now, it's going to be difficult for me to show you because I've done it to all of these, but basically, um, when you pull the trigger, we are saying to check on all of these, it's already been done. You pull the trigger, as you know, reset the trigger, and I'm not sure how you'll be able to see this. Let me try it this way. You'll see how little, right there's the click. That trigger barely moved, and it's able to fire again. So again, to show you that, watch the trigger finger. Right there. I mean, that barely moves. So the short reset trigger kit is something I've installed uh, so, well, two of these guns came with it, two of them were it was installed into, and I think that is a fantastic upgrade. Um, it does not really change the trigger pull much. It did adjust it slightly. On this gun right now, The uh, we're looking at, like I said before, it's right around 11 pounds and just under 5, but really that's an imperceptible difference. Um, what I like about that short reset trigger, when you're and for those of you that shoot that use trigger reset, it really does allow you to quicken or shorten up your follow-up shots. Six-hour accuracy is fantastic. Those of you that have owned six-hour pistols in the past, you already know what I'm talking about with that. That's no different with this one. Um, this one came with the E squared or E2 uh, grip. This is a shorter grip, which also gets your hand a little bit closer to the trigger. It came that way. That's how they come. This particular version was brand new out of the box like that. Um, you, I guess you can go and put a different uh, grip panel on it like some of the traditional SIGs if you choose to. But the, the um, E squared is how that came. And that's about the only changes I've made to this one. I am looking to, I'm considering doing some changes on this as far as the low profile decocker and slide release. I have done that on the 228 which I'll go over here in a few moments. I do like that option. That already comes that way on the Legion which is a nice perk. Alright, a couple of cons with this gun. The first one is obvious for most of these 6 hour pistols. It's the price. 6 hour handguns for the most part are not cheap. They are relatively expensive. Now, I bought this one used, so I was able to save a fair amount of money in that regard, but I, it is still a brand new production pistol. But the cost on these guns can be very cost prohibitive. Also, the weight. These are all metal guns. You've got the steel slides, the aluminum frames. The only real plastic or polymer on these guns is going to be the grips or the grip panels. So there's a significant amount of weight involved. These are not going to be the easiest things in terms of weight as far as concealed carry. Um, no different than a 1911, and many, many people carry 1911s. That's no mystery there. So it's not saying that these cannot be carried. It's just something to be aware of when you're making that decision. All right, so we've talked about um, most of the things in this. One thing I did not mention was the finish on the slide is a nitron finish. Over the years, SIG has gone through a couple of different finishes, and there are some other ones which we'll get to here in a moment, but this is the Nitron finish, and P226, this was actually called the P226 Nitron, was the name of this gun uh, in its original configuration. It does come with SIG light night sights, as I already mentioned, that was the, the version that this one came with. Some of them do not have that, this one does. Alright, the next one we're going to move on to. Right here, this is the SIG M11A1. Now, for those of you who are familiar with the M11, you might be a little bit confused because right here on the grip, I'm not sure if you can see that, it says P228. So 
So people like to know, is that a SIG P228 or is it M11 or is it a 229? All right, so to help clear up some of the confusion, the original 228, which we will get to here in a moment, was a sidearm that was adopted by a number of uh, U.S. government and military agencies um, that was designated as the M11. That, that particular pistol is still made as an M11 for those various agencies. It is not available to the civilian market. Three or four years ago, um, SIG came out with the M11A1, which is this particular firearm right here. The A1 is the civilian designated version of that gun. Now, there are a lot of similarities to it to the 228, and there are some very similarities of it to the current 229. One of the big differences from the 228 and the 229 in their original configurations, the SIG P228 has a folded carbon steel slide, which is fantastic for 9mm. It's not quite robust enough for the 357 SIG or 40 caliber which did not exist at the time when the 228 first came on the market. So when SIG first designed or came out with the 228, it was, it was anticipated to only be the 9mm. There was no such thing as a 40 caliber Smith & Wesson or the SIG 357. So those came along a few years later. They needed, they realized for the, this particular gun to be chambered with that powerful round that they had to come up with the milled stainless steel slide which that particular version of the gun became the SIG P229. All calibers in the 229 series are the milled stainless steel slides. That includes 9mm, 357 SIG, 40 caliber. So this one is very similar, the M11A1, to the 228 from its origins, but now it is more similar to the 229 in terms of the actual slide itself. So it gets pretty confusing. I do apologize for that. We can thank or blame Six hour for that. That's that's their issue to deal with. <laughs> but that is what it is, as they say, as far as that goes. The M11A1 has been out, I think, since 2010 or 11 summer. It's only been uh, four or five years, uh, maybe 2012. I can't remember exactly when, when it was re-released. Um, but it is the current version of the M11 for the civilian market. Now, it is a compact gun. The 226 is a full size. The M11, A1, and the 228 are both compacts. So let's talk about the size differences here. Um, they are both 9 millimeters. The overall length on this one is 7.1 inches, so it's a little more than half an inch shorter than the 226 series. The height is 5.4 inches, so very little difference there. It's one tenth of an inch shorter or smaller than the 226. The width is also 1.5 inches. The weight is 32 ounces with an empty magazine. So not much difference there. Magazine capacity, again, this is going to be an asterisk. The standard magazine is 15 rounds, but you can also use the 17, 18, 20 round uh, options that exist as well. It is a single action, double action. The sights that come on this are the Sig Light Night sights also. The trigger pull on this one is also listed at 10 pounds and 4.4 pounds. I find it to be just over 10 pounds and just under 5 pounds for me. So again, a little bit heavier. It could be my trigger gauge or the scale. It's a high quality $30 part I got off, got off of Amazon several years ago. So certainly that could have some uh, fluctuations in its accuracy. But I do five or six groups and average it out. Um, the barrel length is 3.9 inches, so about half an inch shorter in barrel. The finish on this is also the Nitron finish. This one does not have an accessory rail. The sight radius is 5.7 inches, so again, you're looking at a little over half an inch difference in sight radius between the full size and the compact. All right, so some of the another advantage of the M11A1 is similar to the P226 Mark or MK25 version. It does have some of the phosphate finished internals that makes it more corrosion resistant. Um, the MK25 uh, was also called at one point in time the P226 Navy. If you've seen one of those, it has a, the anchor etched on the side of the slide, and that was the 226 version or variant that had been assigned to the Navy SEALs. And maybe in some cases it still is, who knows. But the point is, that also had the phosphate coated internals. Helps make it more salt water corrosion resistant. This one also has some of those features as well. So that's definitely a, a nice plus for it. This also comes with the short 
reset trigger kit installed already, so it does have that nice, short, crisp, clean reset. Very wonderful. Again, six hour accuracy. The cons, I guess a couple different things with this, and I'm going to mention the price again as I will on all of these. The, the price on six hours just doesn't make it uh, the most you have price friendly option out there. Also, all metal frame, so a little bit heavier. This one does not, as I mentioned, it does not have an accessory rail. For some people, that's a big deal. For other people, it's not as big of a deal. For a carry gun, I, I guess the rail, to me, anyhow, the rail is a little bit less important. I'm not looking for a light or a laser or a, those little pistol size bayonet pig sticker type things. For my carry gun, that's less important to me. For a nightstand gun, that may be more relevant to be able to put a flashlight on there or a laser, whatever the case may be. But for the carry gun, not having the accessory rail is not as big of a deal for me. To some others, it may be. All right, so that is the SIG M11A1. We're going to jump over right now quickly to the SIG P228. Same size as the M11, same origins. The M11 has the same origins in the 228. This one here is a 1994 West German version, so I guess in some people's mind that gives it a nice little pat on the back. It's also the compact size. It is also 7.1 inches in length, 5.4 inches in height, 1.5 inch width, 32 ounces with an empty magazine. Now, magazine capacity on this one gets even goofier. The official magazine capacity on this is 13 rounds. As it was first introduced, it had a 13 round magazine. The 15 round magazine that the M11A1 comes with will work just fine, as will the 18 and 20 and 17. So all of the, the 226 series variant magazines will work in this one. The original version had a 13 round magazine. Um, I have a couple of those that were original to the gun. I've also got a few other ones. That, again, I've got these all use the same basic type magazine. Well, these two won't use the shorter magazines, but I've got a number of different magazines. So 13 round original. Most people would probably have the 15 round minute currently. Single action, double action as well. So um, this one, ha I don't know, I don't, the sights that came on it may have been night sights, but this gun goes back to 1994. So those, if they were night sights, and I really don't remember, it's been a little while now, they were certainly already expired. Currently they have the same sights that come on the Legion, which is called the X-Ray Night Sights. I'll go over more of those in, in detail here in a moment, but this current version has the X-Ray Night Sights. I think they're fantastic Night Sights. They are available from Sig Sauer for any of these pistols. Um, it comes standard on the Legion and is a very nice upgrade to the 228 in my opinion. Uh, the weight, trigger pull weight, again over 11 pounds, probably a little bit more so on this one than with the first two, and right around 5 pounds for the single action. Um, I did put the short reset and the short reach trigger in this one. So this has a trigger kit as well as a different trigger itself. Uh, great combination of improvements in my opinion. The finish on this one, a little bit different. So it's called Sig Sour Blue Finish. As I said earlier, there were a number of different finishes over the years that Sig Sour has used on their pistols. The Nitron finish seems to be the most common nowadays. There are a couple other ones, and I forget some of the names that were mixed in over the years. This one here, don't forget the slide on this one is the folded carbon steel slide with the blued finish. It may look very similar, certainly on camera it does, but even in person, looks very similar to the blued, uh, to the Nitron finish, but there is a difference to it. Um, it does not have an accessory rail either, just like the M11 doesn't. The 228 also does not come with an accessory rail. When the 229 first came out, it also did not have an accessory rail. At some point, and I don't remember the exact year, they started adding the accessory rail, and that became the SIG P229R. So when you're looking at some of these designations out there, and you see a P229 or a P229R, that R signifies that it does have the accessory rail that's part of it. Um, I believe now they're standard that way, but for a few years when it first came out, it was either or. Alright, so let's talk about some of the pros and some of the nice advantages to this uh, 228. As I mentioned, I did put the SRT and the short reach uh, in that. I also added, this is a nice little touch, on this one I put the low profile decocker and slide release on this one. As I mentioned, I'm considering it for the 226 and it does come standard on the Legion. I've also installed those on the, uh, the 228. That does make it, for me, that's just 
it's less stuff sticking out of the slide that may get interfered with depending on your grip. So far I haven't found that to be a problem on the 226. It is also not really a problem on the M11. I do notice it, but I haven't had any issues with it. So I like the fact that I can upgrade it to the 228 over here. As I said earlier, this is the West German gun. This one was proofed in 1994, which I guess 94 or 95, I think, one of those two years, was the last year of the West German designation. West Germany was no longer in existence at that time. They had already... The Berlin Wall had already come down shortly before that, so there was a unified Germany at that point. But many of these parts had already been stamped, so there was still some carryover from the West German stamped slides and West German stamped parts. This was among the uh, the last, I think 95 was the last year that those were being made. This, this, this was made a year before that. So being a West German made and manufactured firearm, again, in many people's opinion, is a real plus. I've had no issues with any of these. Um, I don't have extensive rounds through any of them. I probably have no more than three or four hundred rounds through each. Um, so I don't have a huge sample size to, to give you for as far as reliability, but thus far we're at 100% on all of these firearms. So regardless of where or when it was made, these have proven to be very, very reliable at this point. Um, so let's talk about, there's only a couple cons with this one. The same as the previous ones, it is a little bit heavier gun, so as far as a concealed carry gun, it's not ideal. As I said before, the uh, the 228 or the original M11 uh, it was a standard issue sidearm and still is for many U.S. government agencies. Um, NCIS, uh, some of the Coast Guard, I believe, was involved with something with that, and as well as a dozen or more other ones. Take a look at some of the websites. You'll find a bunch of different uh, agencies that are still using it. Secret Service, I believe, uses the, um, the M11 version or the 229. So obviously it is a gun that's carried by many people. That's not the point that it can't be carried. It's just a little bit heavier than the, the more modern, if you will, polymer frame guns. The last thing that I would consider a con, if you will, on this is that the 228 is no longer available. It has not been, I guess it was re-released briefly in the early 2000s, but it really has not been made as a standalone model for a number of years now, and we may never see it again. Uh, again, we have the M11A1 that is a current production, very similar uh, gun, but it is not the exact same firearm that the 228 is. All right, so the last one we're going to talk about here, and this is one that probably has a lot of people's attention, this is the SIG P226 Single Action, Double Action Legion. All right, so I'm going to go over the stats here real quick, and then we're going to talk about some of the things that are involved with the Legion. It is a full-size 9mm, 7.7 inches long, 5.5 inches tall, 1.5 inches in width, 34 ounces with an empty magazine. Magazine capacity, as I said on the other ones, it has a magazine capacity standard of 15, but you, you can use the extended capacity magazines. I've already said it's a single action, double action. This does have the six hour x-ray night sights. Trigger pull on this one is as advertised. It's right at 10 pounds for the double action and a little less than four and a half for the single action. It is a four and a half inch barrel. The slide finish on this one is a PVD coating. I'll get to that a little bit more here in a moment. So a little bit different than the other three. It does have the accessory rail and the sight radius is 6.3 inches. All right, the list of pros on this, I'm gonna just kind of read off straight from SIG site as far as the Legion series. I'll get to that here in just a moment. A couple of the cons, if you will, we're gonna talk about a few of these here. One of them, uh, obviously price. Um, these can be crazy expensive. MSRP on these is over $1,400. Shop around. They have, been, they have been very, very popular here over the last eight or ten months, but you can find them for less. Um, significantly less in some cases. I know when I got mine, I got it for under $900. I don't believe the gun shop knew exactly what they had because uh, I, I triple checked with them to make sure the price was right. Um, shopped around some other you know, stores in the area and found that the lowest price I'd seen there was over a thousand so that was a no-brainer but I've also seen some of the prices over 1500 so shop around um, certainly you should not have to pay full MSRP on that but that is definitely one of the, uh, the negatives um, there's marketing hype <coughs> excuse me marketing hype involved with the Legion series that's a pro and a con some people really like it, so it's listening to the pro, and I'll get to what that is here in a moment. But as far as the con, some people think it is just that. It's just hype. It is just um, either Sig Sauer trying to capitalize on a name or 
take advantage of the vulnerability of some of the buyers. Who knows exactly where that stands, but that is both a pro and a con. And as I said also, like the other ones, as an all-metal gun, it is a heavy gun. All right, so I'm going to grab my piece of paper here, and we're going to talk about um, SIG's spe specified, I guess, um, enhancements or pros or features of this gun. Wrapping this up as we are getting close to the end here, we're picking up with the different uh, wonderful advances and features that come with the uh, 226 Legion. I've already talked about this in a few different of uh, the previous guns, and I, I can't say enough. Um, the SRT trigger kit and the enhanced action that comes with that really is fantastic. This particular one, the Legion, has um, it's been enhanced even further at the SIG shop, so there's many more advantages to this one than with the other one, but it does have the uh, SRT trigger kit installed. It also has a Grey Guns Intermediate Reach Adjustable Trigger. Alright, so what does that mean? The intermediate reach, we talked about the other ones have the short reach trigger, which means the actual width of the trigger is smaller, making it less distance for your trigger finger to have to reach if you have less than full size. I have very large hands, very normal length fingers, so I do appreciate this. If you have smaller hands, you'll really appreciate this. The intermediate reach kind of falls somewhere in between the standard factory reach and the short reach, so it's, it's a third size that's been introduced. Gray Guns is a service that's a that's a, a you can look at their website Gray Guns I forget that it's somebody Mr. Gray I forget his first name who does a lot of work on the six hour pistols so it's got an adjustable trigger you can adjust the take up you can do some other adjustments to it and it's a very fine tunable trigger system that is another plus it also has we've already mentioned this with the 228 this one has standard the six hour electro optics x ray High visibility day and night sights. That's a mouthful. What I'd like to do is I'm going to show it to you as best I can on the camera. And it's going to be a little bit difficult for you to see it. But even in here in the bright light, that front sight really picks up nicely. Um, it has that, that greenish tint to it that is a very high visibility daytime sight. It also has the night sight as well. Um, so for the next 12 or 15 years, it'll be a fantastic option in the evening. The grip panels on this one are custom G10 grips. In addition to just being a little bit different texture, it also has the Legion logo. Now, some people that logo is a big deal. Um, to me, it's just, it is what it is. It's part of it. I don't really care one way or the other, um, but it is part of it. So it does have the G10 grips. You can get very similar grips that are not the Legion grips if you want to change your current grips. We've already talked about this, one of the changes I made earlier in the 228, but this also has a low profile decocker and slide release lever, or slide release catch. Um, this is another little thing that's going to be easier for me to show you. There's checkering, enhanced checkering, here on the front of the trigger guard, on the bottom of the trigger guard, on the front of the grip, as well as we've got the, the grip panels themselves have the, the texture in the back. So you've got some checkering on these three spots which does help as far as the, the purchase of the gun, how it feels in your hand, it doesn't feel like it's going to slip away. So that's a nice little change as well. It has a re, what they call a relieved frame cutout under the trigger guard. For those of you that don't know exactly what that is, it's tough to actually see, but right through here, it's, it's cut out a little bit more so than you're going to see on the regular 226. Again, very difficult to pick up on the camera, but that allows you, when you're holding the gun, to get a much higher grip angle and grip on the gun. So there's a little bit of, of material that's cut out from that. A nice twist on the gun too. Very nice addition. It does have a solid steel guide rod versus the polymer guide rod on the regular 226. Alright, we talked a little bit ago. This is the finish on this gun, and again, it's difficult to pick up on the camera. These three are blue or black in color. This one is a little bit more of a gray tint. The finish on this is called the Legion Gray PVD finish on the frame and the slide. As I said before, I'll mention exactly what PVD is. PVD stands for Physical Vapor Deposition. PVD. Well, that's a pretty technical term, so I had to do some internet searching and looking up on that. And, and basically all that comes down to is that's a treatment to the metal for a hardness. We mentioned these are nitron coated on the other on these two here, the M11A1 and the two in the current 226 are nitron coating. 
PVD is basically the same thing. As well as, you also heard the term melanite finish on some other brands. Again, basically the same thing. The real difference on the Legion is the color. It's a little bit of a grayish tint to it. I could not find anything on the internet to designate the PVD coating to be superior to any of these other ones we talked about, nor is it inferior. It just seems to be a different name or title to basically the same type of finish. Another finish we've all heard of before, if you're familiar with Glocks, is Tenifer. Tenifer is a finish application that is not applied in the States because of the, I guess the after effects, there's a, a cyanide gas offputs during the production that is illegal here in the States. Um, so Glocks, the parts that are made here in the States, the slides are not Tenifer coated, they're basically nitron or melanite coated. Again, it's fancy names for basically the same type of a finish. There may be some very subtle differences, but I could find nothing to indicate one to be superior or inferior to the other. So that's what PVD coating is. All right. Um, the beaver tail. Now, let's, let's talk real quickly about the beaver tail. I'm going to show you the regular 226 first. This has almost no beaver tail to it. Some of the 226s have an exaggerated beaver tail. The Legion has more of a subdued beaver tail. So this one is slightly bigger than the regular 226, but it's smaller than some of the other ones that are out there. The beaver tail is a big plus for a lot of people as far as the way that the gun handles and feels. The fact that this one is not so large that it gets in the way is definitely considered a plus. It does come with three magazines, brand new, and again, you can substitute any of the other P226 magazines. There's no issue with that. All right, before I get into these other little goodies over here, I want to talk about another thing. I mentioned before Steve Jenkins, who's another YouTuber, he did a 10, now 11 part video uh, composition on transforming an older P226 into as close as he could get Legion 226. The reason I bring this up is, um, when, the, when I know when the Legion first came out, there were a lot of haters and bashers out there on the internet talking about, oh, the, it's just hype, it's just this, it's no different, it's no better, blah, 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 you can transform it yourself and save, you know, a big bucks. So he went and set about to do just that. Now, he already owns the 226 Legion, the 229 Legion, and many, many other Sig Sauers. But he talked about it in the end, and I'm not going to go through each video again, so that's... It's a 10-part series of the upgrades, and there's an 11th video, which you'll need to watch. But what he talks about in through these each step is there are so many things you can do and some things you cannot do. For example, the 226 does not have the checkering under the trigger guard or in front of the trigger guard. You can't add that without sending it off to get refinished. The, the Legion is undercut, as I mentioned, that the, the regular 226 is not. You cannot add that. This has the this shortened the beaver tail. This particular gun does not have a beaver tail. The one that he was using was an older West German P226 that had the larger beaver tail. He couldn't shorten the beaver tail. So there are a few things you cannot do to an older 226 to make it just like the Legion. You cannot buy these exact grip panels except for the Legion. So he could not buy those and put on his old 226. He did find some panels that were very, very similar minus the Legion logo. So there were a handful of things that he could not exactly duplicate. But interestingly, in the end, he did a nice summary at the very end of his, oh, not on the video, he did it on his website. Um, he ended up, he found that for the just the costs alone, for including buying the, the used West German 226 and all of the upgradable parts, the, the revamped or refurbished gun was $110 cheaper than the MSRP of the 226 Legion. Now the reason I bring that up is because I know there are some people out there who are going to watch this video and shame, 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 say I wasted time and money on the, on the Legion, it's not worth it, it's this and that. And really that's each person's own opinion or preference. I'm not here to say you should or shouldn't, that's up to you to decide. But the reason I bring this up is I was very curious about all this, which is actually how I found his series of videos. So I wanted to find someone who did as much research as possible, or actually in his case, he actually did all of these upgrades, to see just what the price difference would be. Now, as I said, that price difference of $110 does not include any gunsmithing fees. He did all the work himself because that's what he does. I don't know how much the gunsmithing would cost, but I'll bet you would cost at least another 100 bucks because there was a lot of work that was involved with that. 
So if you factor that into it, it's actually cheaper just to buy the Legion. Now, maybe the differences aren't things you're interested in. That's fine. That's up to you to decide. But it was interesting for me to find out that it was actually a worthwhile investment. All right. Now, having said all of that, I want to talk about a few things we've got over here. When I said before, when you sign part of the Legion, when you buy the gun, you will find that what you get with the gun is a, you, you register the gun and you, they will, once you've registered, they will mail you this case. It is a zippered case with the cutout on the inside for the gun, for the two additional magazines. You can put a knife or whatever in here. And then <laughs> the Legion challenge coin. Now this is kind of a joke, but it is what it is. It's got a Legion on one side. It's got the logo on the other side, and there's a spot in the case for it. All right. That by itself, I don't think anybody's buying the gun just because they get that for free. But it is nice that they include it for free. It does come with the regular six-hour box or the little case on, or initially. But you can, you get this. It took five or six weeks to get all this in after the fact. I think they said they were backordered on the, the coin or something. Who knows? But also by doing that, by registering the gun, you're signing up for the Legion account. It doesn't cost you anything to be the member of the Legion, okay, for whatever that's worth. But by doing that, you have access to purchase things that other people cannot purchase. You have to be an owner of a Legion to have access to these items. Um, this is a holster that I got. This is the regular um, Black Point Tactical holster for the SIG 226. But it does include the Legion logo on the holster, and it's gray instead of black. Does that mean it's another worth? And it doesn't cost any more. It's actually, I think, a couple dollars less, perhaps. But does that mean that you have to buy the Legion just so you can get this wonderful holster? Again, that's for you to decide. I needed a holster, so I decided to go with that one. I would not buy the gun just to have access to get that holster. That's ridiculous. So in summary, we've talked about four different Sig Sauer guns that are very, very similar and very, very different. The 226 series which has been around since the early 80s, is a time-proven firearm that has a lot of things going for it. Uh, law enforcement, military, special forces, worldwide, trust and like and use the 226 or one of its variants. The variants would include the 228, M11, M11A1, 229 series. Um, great guns. They are not cheap. They are well-made. The difference between the German-made guns and the U.S.-made guns, that's a, another topic for another day. That's for most people to decide on their own. There are many people who will tell you that the German-made guns are far superior. There are many people who will tell you that they are unable to really determine or identify any significant differences. I'm not here to, to answer that question today. But this series of pistols, I wanted to do a little bit of review on the differences so people that are out there looking to buy a SIG 22 something series pistol, you have some insight as to just what the differences are. The size differences, the feature differences, the advantages, the disadvantages, whatever the case may be, you now have some additional insight. Once again, I thank you very much for watching. If you've got any questions or comments, please share below. Uh, if you have any thoughts on additional videos based on these, let me know that also. I will do some. I'm just trying to figure out the, which ones to do first and which ones you folks are most interested in seeing. So we'll get something coming out here shortly on that. Again, thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. Have a great day.